Now let's do it. Great. What is up, everybody? This is the Quad with Chris Young. As always, I'm Chris. We get Haley the Bear. Hello, hello. Producer Josh. Do we leave that blooper in at the beginning, or do we I, do we just cut it for the sake of? <laughs> so, and and Ryan from Miami, who is where? Where are you? Uh, yeah, middle of Western New York. You know, okay. somewhere okay. where they don't like the Dolphins very much. Uh, we he he'll probably edit uh, for the video for the video later, but I um, might keep the audio part of it. Yeah, for those of you guys, if we decide not to keep it, it's a we moot. just, yeah. It's a moot point at that point. But we start every episode, we have to do a clap, a slate for the video so that we can, so Monsell can sync the video and audio together. We we may have forgotten to just do that. Ran right through that one, didn't I? Just like, here we go. <laughs> yep. Just kidding. Start over. Happy Monday, everyone. Happy Monday. Um, obviously, always happy to be here with you guys, Ryan. Do you know yes. what the poll is? Uh, we, we didn't, didn't put a one. poll up last week. I know. I just wanted to say it's a good save. Good good save. <laughs> well, so here's the funny thing when he you went. when you sent out oh. when, when you sent out the rundown today or yesterday, I had my heart fluttered. I was like, "Oh my god, I forgot to post the poll. I forgot to post the poll." So I go to the Twitter account and I'm like, "Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We Am I being tricked one. here? Am I being we played? Didn't do one. Yes. Yeah." So you're keeping me on my toes. I like it. I always, I always keep that in the rundown for us. But um, yeah, I had to, I had to give you a little joke there, especially after I, like I, I forgot to slate at the beginning. Um, so uh, let's let's go straight to music. Music. Uh, we do not have a chart update today. I don't believe. I think it's uh, it'll be tomorrow. Um. But I am getting ready to go to Alaska. Alaska, you say? I I very much uh, am am dreading <laughs> that flight because it's really funny on on one of the grids that we have to kind of like keep everything in line with like where my shows are. It shows all the routing, and this, <laughs> there's just one <laughs> way over here on the map. <laughs> Um, but it's, it's going to be awesome. I've never been before and, uh, I, I don't know how I'm going to do with the fact that it, you know, it's like all, all sunshine right now. It's no nighttime. It's, yeah. No nighttime whatsoever, but uh, it's like 21 hours, I think. So I think you have three hours of, of nighttime. Cool. A nap. <laughs> awesome. Uh, but I'm very much looking forward to the shows and, and checking that off as my very last state in the U.S. that I've not played. So I, I did a couple interviews. Everybody seems to be really excited. We're going up there. So if you live in Alaska, we're heading your way and come hang out with us. It's going to be fun. So, have you scheduled so have any to, uh, fishing or anything like that? Sorry. Oh, I'm going to I'm definitely going to try to get some fishing in. Even if I just ice fishing, like, do they ice fish in the summer? Well, I mean, it, it's no. still believe cold, it or not, they still they still have fish in the river when I, it's not frozen. They, right? they said the the fishing is really good right now. Evidently, well, at least one of the places we're going because that did come up on on my uh, radio call. Well, then you definitely need to bring me back some fish. <laughs> just bring back <laughs> fish for everyone. <laughs> You're like here, here, here. <laughs> I, I have for you a fish I presented to you. It's a delicious bass. Mm. Thank you. That sounded weird because it's... I think he did that on purpose. Brian's name. Was that intentional? Was it? Maybe. Uh, what were you getting ready to ask, well, I Brian? prefer trout. I prefer trout. Um, so I have to out our good buddy, Monsell because I was sitting next to him as he was trying to uh, purchase flight tickets to Anchorage, Alaska for the show. He used chat GPT to come up with a list of things to do in Anchorage, Alaska for the record. So, uh, so, you know, chat GPT given Monsell uh, his, his uh, suggestions on what to do in Alaska. Well, and we are going to try to just capture as much content as possible while I'm up there. Cause you know, it, it's taken me, 
38 years to get up there for the first time. I don't know when the next time's going to be. So, uh, are you going to see the Northern Lights? That would be pretty cool. Northern Lights are something you have to like check out if you're up there. All right. Normally, I am a a wealth of random information. You have now asked me two things that I don't know because I don't go to Alaska. (laughs) You're like, do they have ice fishing right now? I'm like, I don't Mm -hmm. know. (laughs) Well, you see the Northern Lights? Maybe. Maybe we'll fake some Northern Lights at the back of a video. I don't know. Uh, I just know I'm going to have a good time while up there. So that's really exciting. Yeah. I've never been to Alaska. I may be very like <laughs> off schedule wise when I come back mm-hmm. <laughs> for next for week. sure. Yeah, I think it's Alaska and Hawaii are the two I've never been to. Forget playing. I haven't played in a lot of in a lot of states, but I've never been to. Hawaii's cool too. Well, Hawaii was the one place I thought I was never going to make it, and I finally made it. I'm happy I went. But Alaska was probably going to be up there, too, because I'll have absolutely zero reason to go to Alaska. You never um, know. Unless it's for hunting, which is also absolutely ridiculous to try and get to hunt up there. So so let's do it. Are you ready for what are you listening to? Do you have anything that's new? We start tour rehearsals tomorrow. So I am. <laughs> You'll be like. Locked in a room, locked into a room, staring at Ableton, just making edits and great and building the show out for great, great for the summer. But, um, yeah, we do, we do a week of rehearsals here and then a week up with the rig just outside of Nashville. Yeah. And then it's off to the races this summer. Cool. Yeah. I mean, we're all going to be rocking for the summer now, but yeah, uh, I, I I suspect for our listeners and our viewers, there may be a few more Zoom <laughs> Zoom pods this summer than we normally do because we're all going to be <laughs> in different places. In different places a lot. Yeah, you know what? We'll make it work. It's okay as long as we can get the content to you guys. That is all we are worried about. It's the only thing that matters is you, you listening at home. You're the only thing that matters to us. You guys. Um, Insert man on poster. <laughs> Uh, I, I am going to need a second for the first time. Cause I had one and then I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I know. I well, know. I'll go first then. Okay. So this week, the song I am choosing is back seats and burnt CDs by Ryan Griffin. Fun okay. Song. I like it. I like it a lot. He has a couple few good songs, but let's go with that one for this week. Ryan, I so there was a throwback session happening a couple of days ago here in Western New York of music. And one of the ones that I put on that I loved from my childhood that my dad used to blast when I was in the car. Night Moves by Bob Seger, baby. (laughs) Bob Seger. Come on. Oh, yeah. That's a good good one. one. That's a good one. I'm here for it. Uh, Mine this week. I've picked this song before, but not this version of it. It is Range Rover. By Ben Rector, his version. However, yes. he put out a live version with featuring Stephen Day and Jordy Searcy, where they do it all a cappella, like a barbershop. It's a trio because there's only three of them, not a quartet. And it is huh. delightful. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. I'll check that out. I don't think I've ever heard that. No. It, it just came out like very recently. So it was like just dropped. Mm-hmm. Um. Mm. Okay, got to make a decision. I, I'm going to go, um, just because I saw this pop up, uh, Hurt, but the cover, the Johnny Cash version. Great. And it's a very, very heavy song, obviously, um, but I, I just think that is one of those things where it was like, I don't know who got in the room and went, this we're, this one, we're going to do this one. Um. I don't know how that recording came about, but it's really, really different and very interesting. And obviously that was, you know, I think, was that his last? That was his last song. It was his last record. Well, his last. Last record that he put yeah. out. Yeah. Last record. I just remember people being like, oh, I felt like it was like a, a pre, what, what word am I looking for? I, I don't know. 
<laughs> like a pre a precursor to his death. Is uh, that what you, yeah, because yeah, he died shortly after. That I don't I don't think I don't think was. that's I don't think he was telegraphing anything on that. But um, it brings up an interesting point that maybe we turn into a hot take. I don't know if we've done this, but songs that the <clears> cover <throat> is bad, oh, better than did. the original. We, we, we did do we've, that. We've done we did that. that. We've done that we before. Did do that one. Yeah. Okay. Although that is a good one to add in there. Plus, we're getting ready to to do something sort of similar. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. Let's go to sports. Sports. Golf is weird. Did you guys see the putt on eighteen where the ball just like wasn't even a like crazy long putt? Just drops in, comes, comes right, right back, back out, out the hole. It's like the groundhog just punched it back yeah. out. Yeah. Yep. He's like, nope. Not here. Not today, buddy. How does that happen? I don't know. It like obviously it had to have like ricocheted off the edge, but it it's not like he hit it with like some crazy amount of speed. Was this was this what day was this? Because I didn't was this the final round? This was, day three. Yeah, this was uh, no. Was I that thought day it was four? I thought it was day four. It was the final round. Hmm. And then obviously there's you know, only ever been one round of 62, and the very first day, two people go out and shoot 62, and neither one of them win the tournament. Yeah, and then Tommy Fleetwood shoots a 64, I think, in his final round. It doesn't even crack the top five. Like, it's it was a pretty nutty weekend in golf. It's wild. Three hole-in-ones on the same hole. Yeah, which was which was awesome. By the way, shout-out to Wyndham Clark, winning his first-ever major. Yes. Um, really cool story. This is a guy who, in 2013, his mother died from breast cancer. Um, he was at Oklahoma State as a college golfer. He actually contemplated quitting the game of golf. Um, transferred to Oregon, ended up turning pro. Won his first ever professional win last month. And then now wins his first major. Like, an incredible story. It was there for the taking for Rory McIlroy, by the way. But it is a really cool story for Wyndham Clark to be able to win it. I was going to say, didn't he? Did, did Clark par the last hole or bogey the last hole to win? Clark parred the entire final round. So, like, he, he okay. there was an opportunity for Rory there. And Rory, he actually bogeyed, I think it was uh, 15, uh, the only bogey by a player at 15 on Sunday. And yet Rory still couldn't come back to, to overtake him. I got to be honest. Normally, I, I watch these very closely. Most of the information that I've gotten is either, like, short clips or just, like, the announcement at the end of it. I didn't really watch too much of this tournament. Uh, I did hear about all the drama with them, like not giving the the tickets to anybody but primarily sponsors, which is just kind of wild. L.A. right, L.A. Country Club. Okay, yeah, you know that area, Josh. You know it's it's kind of swanky. You know, <clears throat> it is a very private, 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 private underscore private club yeah. in which celebrities aren't really even allowed to be members. You have to be like in an industry and a CEO or owner of something, your, your dues when you sign up are $250,000. That is not your yearly. That is just your fee to be a member. Oof. Yikes. Brooks Kepka, by the way, blasted the LA country club. Like was like, I am not a fan of this course. I was, I was trying to open the door for our, our resident, like, sports news guy to like walk through and you were just like standing on the other side of the open doorway staring at me for a second i was like <laughs> well I, Dude, this I, is I your layup i'm setting way you up go i eventually made my way through but brooks has said of that course he said i'm not a huge fan of blind tee shots then i think there's just some spots that no matter what what you hit the ball just ends up in the same spot he says i think it would be more fun to play on just like a regular round than it would be a u.s open Ooh, Ooh. Yikes. This is somebody who's this is somebody who's made a living winning U.S. Open. So there yeah. was a lot of pushback. They've already awarded the Country Club another major in like 2036. So I mean, they probably made a bunch of money, 100. percent But they do need to <laughs> fix the ticket situation. It the vibe, the vibe was very weird. There wasn't quite the like that golf like cool chill vibe, but especially for the U.S. Open, which like yeah. usually has a lot of like just. This isn't Augusta. This is just a normal event that most people will go to. And so you can have the hometown heroes and their families, et cetera, that are there cheering them on. And it just didn't have any of that. It didn't. It didn't put out that vibe. And then also. also it, go ahead, Ray. No, I was just going to say we're starting to see the effect of uh, Live Golf's, well, before the merger push on uh, PGA Tour because this was the largest purse ever awarded mm-hmm. in U.S. Open history yes. at $20 million. And And, I mean, you do have to walk that fine line of – 
we can give you more money, but it may be, you know, a, a little Courses. more corporate here yeah. and there, at which that I think everyone has to do that. I mean, that's why... <laughs> A That's lot. why corporate gigs exist Correct. for like musicians <laughs> and people. I don't know if you get, yeah. Yep. Like maybe you played something for Walmart recently. Recently. <laughs> and, you know, they talked about their yearly earnings and it was a number that would <laughs> shock you. <laughs> no, no way. <laughs> Walmart. Yeah. That's a lot of money. Um, Shout out to Walmart, by the way. We love yeah, you. we love you. We love you. <laughs> I had a great time. Thank you guys so much. Uh, you know what? While we're while we're giving shout outs, I I know I alluded to it. You guys have broken me for any other water. I did. I will actively look for core water everywhere I'm at now. I'm like, I, finally- I gotta have it. I got a I got Come a bottle of core water and he he drank Say some it again. and he goes Say it into the camera. Yes, I know. I d- All right, now we have to take this clip and send it core to core water. <laughs> yeah. It like for my work even for like workouts. I know. I'm it's like so All right. refreshing. I got to get I gotta, like I I went to a second place the other day just so I could get core water. It is not only delicious and appropriately pH balanced for your body. As someone who struggles with drinking enough water in the day, I can chug these bottles. There is something about it that I'm just like, this is great. This is what my body needs. And we love you for it. We do. See, and we I would wanna... love for you to be a part of this. Josh is like smiling like a little kid. I don't know if yeah. you can tell, Rye, just how happy he is right now. It's one thing for me to hype it up. But when a massive celebrity to my right <laughs> talks about this, this is where we can get the ball rolling. This is this is it. We're This is our oh. year. All right, well, we're going to do it. Check out their three new flavors. Grapefruit, (laughs) lemon, and cucumber. I want to try their lemon and cucumber waters. That's amazing. All right. Was that our enough? Uh, That was good. That was good. You nailed it. (laughs) All right, let's move on to the downfall of the Miami Heat. Oh. Since, you know, that was last Monday night, and we haven't got to talk about it yet. We, We didn't really lean super into that although if you'd like to talk about something else uh how about that bradley beal <laughs> how about that bradley the, beal where do, where would we, where would we like to start first ryan would you like to in memoriam of the the 2023 miami heat sure jimmy sure. buckets we love you, know, you we look jimmy butler had a historic nba playoff run prior to game six against the boston celtics um you know, and didn't really look the same. Look, I I cannot be mad with where this season finished. While in the heat of the moment, obviously, I'm upset for these. Th- I think the Miami Heat have now lost three consecutive NBA Finals appearances that they've been in. Um, you know, we were right there, and it was a historic run for an eight seed that shouldn't have been in that position to begin with. Um, you know, you you lose your first play in game. You're you're nearly going to lose your second to the Chicago Bulls, and yet you reel off a run beating the the number one team in the East. Uh, you know, you you take down the Knicks, a, a longtime rival, and then you know nearly blow a three zero series lead, but uh, escape that to win Game Seven in Boston. I, look, I'm happy with with the way they they play. I think they're still a superstar away. And and Josh and I were talking about this. That they have to make some sort of move to get a complimentary superstar because as good of an NBA finals as Bam had, he's not it. He's not that guy. They were without Tyler Hero. I don't think even having Tyler Hero on the court would have would have, you know, put them over the top there. So I think congrats to Denver. Tyler Hero is a piece. Bingo. I think so too. I think maybe to acquire a Damian Lillard, which I'm sure we're going to talk about that in a minute. But um congrats to Denver. You know, you I, I I do find it incredibly comical that the greatest player on the planet was mum about winning what is the ultimate prize, basically being like, I just want to go back to Serbia. I, I don't really care about participating in a parade and that's eh, just my job. Who I, cares if I win? It was it was kind of funny. So I, I do have to say that was highly disappointing to me. It's like I I get he's like, Hey, I I did my thing. It's been a long season. But I mean, you won. I think it's even just he's the bored by his own greatness. And he yeah, but it's that's not first of all, that is not 
<laughs> Did you say it's the culture? Well, I said it's eight. like the opposite of the Miami <laughs> Heat. They're like, ah, oh, we no, want to go home. Um, though, no, no, my boss no, was Serbian, so no, he- no, no. You just won the biggest thing you can win at your sport. Even Nick Saban <laughs> is happy in the moment when he wins. <laughs> like, I, I get it, but he's like, oh, I don't, I don't want to do a parade. I'm like, man, come on. In fairness, once he was at the parade, he really, really loved the parade and got on the mic and said, I'm never leaving this effing parade. So, yes, I, to me, it reads a, I, and I hear what you guys are saying, and I, I don't disagree because it, it feels a little forced. It feels a little like I, the, you can look at it from the other direction where it's like, oh, it's endearing because he is just this very sort of different style thinker than what we normally see from someone where they're like, yeah, I'm the like. But, but I'm the so, greatest in the world. Right, Anything is right, possible. Right. Like, yeah. and, and so, and I don't know how much of this is like, remember Tim Duncan? Tim Duncan wasn't particularly like, oh, I did it. He was just like, great team win. I love all my guys. Let's try to do it again. Let's win one every other year. Yes. I, there's never been anyone who won the NBA finals and was like, Ugh, I don't want to really celebrate it tomorrow. Well, he didn't even know there was a I parade. To- that's the best thing. He was like, wait, a parade? <laughs> I have to laugh because Vice did a, a, a parody article, which is just comical. And the title of it is Employee of the Month Rewarded with More Work. And here's the first <laughs> graph of it. A Denver area worker was shocked and saddened to learn Monday evening that in line with American tradition, his employer was requiring him to work more additional hours as a result of being identified as one of the organization's top performers of the year. (laughs) That's pretty incredible. Jokic, a Serbian tradesman who commutes to the U.S. for work, had previously believed he had logged his final work day of the season on Monday when he completed the final task of his to-do list. He was then informed he was required to stay in the Denver area until Thursday for a company celebration tied to his team's performance in the most recent quarter. This is great. I'm shocked that they didn't somehow loop in like the the big trend where like <laughs> corporations are getting dunked on. They're like, you did a great job. Uh, we got you a pizza party. Pizza yeah. party. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't try to go that route. Casual, with it a casual little bit. Thursday. Exactly. <laughs> oh, so do you, good. Do you so think good. any of this is blowback? So Jokic was picked last by LeBron in the all-star game. Do you think that this is him just being anti, like the anti LeBron, like, look at me, I deserve this, whatever. And him just going like, hey, you want to crap on me? I know I'm better than you. Let me just be the exact opposite from you as possible. I can see that. You still get it. Celebrate the win. Just, just. I think it was weird that he left the finals MVP. MVP like in the equipment closet. Even know like, where it I don't know yeah. where it is. That that was a little That's weird. That's weird. That was a little weird. That's but. come on. That's all I'm saying. I'm not. I'm not anyone that this is like the first because it's the first time your team wins this. Like they've they've never won one before, have they? No, this is the first time in so, franchise history. Yeah. So the, the I mean like I'm not trying to be like I, I you don't you can celebrate your win however you want to obviously, but it just. Almost like you said, seemed a little bit forced. Where it's like, it uh, it did. Now, if they win two more over the next four or five years, oh, then you're like, okay, you're gonna he, look back and be like, oh, about about. Mamba mentality. This is what Kobe would have done. Job's not finished. Imagine until I how win three. bored he's gonna be then. Imagine how <laughs> bored he's gonna be with like back to back titles. Like, All no. right, Job's not finished. Job's not finished. You're acting like he said that right after he won a title. There's not videos of him crying holding the trophy. Sure. I'm just I'm just saying. I, I, revisionist history. I wanted history. that moment. I that, did that is one I of the too. things you look forward to in sports is you want the human to see moment. them be like, fi- look, we, we, we did it. This is amazing. You want to see them like jump up and hug each other. And, but, I, go ahead. I... Watching the game, he did show a lot of emotion on the sidelines when it came to things that were leading up to him winning. The sidelines? Mm-hmm. I said sidelines. Yeah, yeah. Side of the court. <laughs> um, if you're looking for that experience, watch Jamal Murray, because this is a dude that had to overcome so much, a, a horrific knee injury, 
thinking they're going to trade him to then coming back and, and getting to win a championship. And that dude was in his feels for sure. Yeah. And by the way, the line on Jokic to lead the NBA finals in assists was like minus 20,000 or some crazy number like that. And it was Murray who led the NBA finals in assists, yeah. which is would have been a great bet. But would it have been a great bet? Because what was he minus? You left that part out. Yeah. <laughs> numbers numbers okay uh now to, to say what you say uh bradley beal just yeah. traded from the washington wizards to the phoenix suns for chris paul landry shamit and two second round picks this is a fleecing <laughs> this is a fleecing by you yeah, know what happened to the wizards uh, the phoenix Oof. suns and what we what bill simmons from the ringer has called <clears throat> new new owner syndrome which is a new owner comes into the league and then they want to make a splash as, as quickly as possible I don't think this makes their team any better, to be honest. Bradley Beal has not any better. Brad, he he would let the NBA in scoring last year. On a terrible, you can lead this. You can average every single shot. Yeah, you can you can average twenty five points a game if your team is terrible and you can just jack up shots. Look at the player efficiency rating first. Which also, I I would challenge you, anyone outside of one of you two guys. or like anyone that just looked at that stat, if you ask 99% of NBA fans, they're probably not going to know that it was him. Also, to look at it, he did it exactly on a contract season so that he could get his Supermax, which would then allow him to secure the bag. I don't trust players... Go ahead. When was that? What was that? You were wrong. You, you mentioned you mentioned you mentioned the player efficiency rating. I just want to read to you his ranking and oh, player efficiency is. rating because because this is this is pretty bad. Okay, so he is forty fourth. Bradley Beal is in the all encompassing player efficiency rating, uh, just ahead of Daniel Gafford of the Washington Wizards as well, uh, and just behind Jarrett Allen, Robert Williams the third, and Mark Williams. Uh, I don't even know who Mark Williams is. Uh, and a couple of spots ahead of Mason Plumlee. Yep. The two, Mark, <laughs> Mark Williams plays for um, uh, Charlotte. Charlotte. De, de, de Charlotte. Yeah, that's right. I was going to say Detroit. De Charlotte. I was going to say Detroit. Um, meanwhile, those two people ahead of Bradley Beal are centers who shoot like 65% from the field every night because they're not taking jump shots. Yeah. yeah. Oof. So this doesn't... You, the way to win is to have very highly efficient players in multiple spots. Okay. This is, this is how the NBA is won. Jamal Murray is a highly efficient player. Nikola Jokic is a highly efficient player. KCP is a highly efficient player. This is how you win, right? Taking more shots when you already have Kevin Durant and Devin Booker is now just giving you a very, very overpriced spot up shooter in the corner. And maybe he hits more than Landry Shamit. Maybe he does. I don't know. But also, Bradley Beal has not exactly been a pinnacle of health for the last five years. So what are you really getting? Also, who's playing point guard for this team? I I, I don't know, but I mean, it's the end of Chris Paul's chances to... Chris Paul will get bought out by the Washington Wizards and will likely sign with the Clippers or the Lakers. That is that is okay. that's what. So maybe maybe he does have like one more he shot. Has one somewhere. more one more shot to to make it happen. Okay, but he could finally end up on the Lakers like 15 years after David Stern blocked Correct. that deal. That'd be pretty great. Correct. Yeah, and that that seems more likely than the Clippers, but I'm I don't know his relationship with that franchise post the trade. So hmm. CP will get probably one more shot at this. Okay, but we'll see. But hey, I by the way, baseball's going on. Only sport going on right now. Just Roy- so you know. Royals, worst team in the league. Let's go. How are the Cubs? Uh, we had a good game the other day, but we're still pretty far behind. Like Ryan. Uh, if you look at the top of the power rankings, there's been one team that's been at the top of the power rankings since beginning of April, and that would that's, be your Tampa Bay Rays. I didn't ask about power rankings. I They're not my Tampa Bay What's your record? Uh, 51 and 24. The only 51 team in baseball. There you go. Yeah, that's Cubs, the stat. Mm. That's the better stat. Cubs is mm. not not dead last, but uh, we're the, right above the Cardinals and right below the Pirates. I think the Royals won 19 games so far. 
Oh, <laughs> I, I uh, they actually do have 19 wins. I do want to reiterate one more thing because we say it each and every time. Shohei Otani is something to marvel at. And I just wish, I, I really hope during baseball season now that basketball's over and hockey's over, that more people get an opportunity to watch this guy play because it is, he is not only leading Major League Baseball in home runs, but is one of the best pitchers in the game. It's pretty, it's pretty incredible what he so, does on a daily basis. Yes, agreed. Um, but no one's going to see it until he gets signed by the Dodgers or the yeah. or the Yankees. Yeah, yeah, I think we've acknowledged uh, last year that Shohei he Otani is absolutely incredible, but no one cares because no one... it's Anaheim. Yeah, unfortunately, LA. I guess technically, no. Yeah, they're in a playoff spot though. They might actually make the playoffs for the first time with Mike Trout and and Shohei Otani there. So. <laughs> What That's, an accomplishment for your franchise. Yikes. <laughs> that, you, what, what's up with you and the stats you're picking out today? They just might actually make the playoffs. It was a great bet because the one that didn't win was minus 20,000. Well, what was the other one? <laughs> really racist. I do, I do, I do want to make a, a funny, another funny stat. So the Royals you mentioned are, have the worst record in baseball. They're okay. 19 and 52. Wait, wait, They're wait, wait, 16 and a half games back. In the AL Central, the no, Red no, no, Sox no, wait, wait, were thirty-seven, wait, 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 thirty-five, wait, wait, or twenty. Wait, 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 stop! You're, so now you're trying to take the stat that I have to say, which is what's interesting is you, I knew you were going to try to rip this stat before I could get to it. The worst team in the AL East has a better record than the Twins, who are leading the AL Central. AL Central. That's a not that's a better good. stat. That's a better stat than I was going to give. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. We wow. try hard. <laughs> Games That's are fun slogan. at the K. It's a great time. I did. And by the way, there's a lot, the Twins, the Guardians, the Tigers, the White Sox, and the Royals. I'm not trying to like. They're all bad. Dunk on you know. Let's That's wait, the what's second the White time Sox I've used record? that phrase. I need to. Thirty one. Uh, Thirty one and forty two. Yeah. If you ever get a chance to see a game at the K, it's go. Wonder, it's a wonderful time. It's a beautiful park. I, I'm i going in less than a month for Rays and Royals. By the way, I do love the slogan of, come watch us, we try hard. That's a great slogan. I love that. The games are fun. <laughs> games, the games are fun. Are you fun. can get tickets pretty cheap at your local hy V or Price Chopper. Please. Your hy V. Go ahead. What were you going to say about the the Cubs? Or you? I didn't know if you were looking up a stat. I was just trying to see if the Cubs were ahead of the White Sox, and we are. Okay. All right. <laughs> Congratulations. Yay. By two games. Let's, uh, let's go to movies. <laughs> movies. Oh, man. A little life hack. If you want to see your favorite baseball team play against the Royals. Go watch the Royals. <laughs> tickets are so cheap, you can probably just walk in and sit like third baseline. I, uh, anyway. I I was also laughing because while you guys were uh, <laughs> we we're trying to just stat dump all over everyone, uh, I looked up uh, the movie for this week to do the, the rundown of it, <laughs> The Flash, and I looked down and the trailer that's playing was of the movie, but then I was like, hmm, that nine se- seasons, nine seasons of and I'm like, Oh, even when you type that in, the TV show comes up first. <laughs> and I had to type in the Flash movie, movie to get it to bring that up. Because I thought, I was like, hmm, that Rotten Tomato score seems higher than what I remember. And it was because it's <laughs> <laughs> critically acclaimed. <laughs> um, so, this is also a very long description. <laughs> you know, some of these movies, it's like four sentences. <laughs> Worlds collide when the Flash uses his superpowers to travel back in time to change the events of the past. However, when his attempt to save his family inadvertently alters the future, he becomes trapped in a reality in which General Zod has returned, threatening annihilation. With no other superheroes to turn to, the Flash looks to coax a very different Batman out of retirement and rescue an imprisoned Kryptonian, albeit not the one he's looking for. Box office of 139 million so far, um, which is a bit misleading because I think it's I think that's global box office. Mm. Um, every everyone that's posted about it has been like not good numbers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gonna lose money. Um, doesn't bode well for a lot of the characters that you end up getting to meet in this particular setting in the universe and a lot, you know, 
just to to address it you know the the lead in the movie didn't do any interviews with the press leading up to this because he's had some run-ins with the law he's had some issues outside of his profession uh, his profession that is the best way to put that very, so very nice way of saying that um i have to be 100% honest i i went with a big group of people there were some people that were like eh not for me there were some people that were like it's good I firmly expected to be in the camp of, man, I liked this because I got to see Keaton. Sure. I really liked it. I, I, I really did. I, I think just the way that they handled it was cool from a CGI perspective. I thought a there, there's so many callbacks. There's a bunch of stuff that I thought they had given everything away because they had, you know, people knew that. And Time for some thank you for that. Gotcha. I have so uh, many spoilers. I want to give You away. saw me just getting uncomfortable trying like, to dance I, around it. I, I just say it. Yeah, the these are minor spoilers. I'm not even going to go into the big ones because you guys haven't seen it yet, and Correct. I think. I think you'll probably watch it at some point. Uh, obviously, you knew Keaton was going to be in it as Batman. Would that have been better as a reveal and ha- not put it in the trailer? Or did that? Well, do you think that drove people really, to it? There's other yeah. really good reveals. Yeah, there's 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 so many other callbacks and like allusions to other things. And um, I mean, it, the one that I was looking forward to as well uh this has already been spoiled everywhere like they've they've talked about this one but it it was not (laughs) revealed early on there's a an infamous story um that kevin smith tells about when um and maybe some people don't know this or are aware of it but there was a a superman movie getting pitched that was going to be helmed by tim burton and he went in and basically was like, well, the script doesn't make any sense. And they're like, well, we'd like to bring you in to, to help do rewrites on it. And it, it like evolved into this story of him talking about <laughs> when, when he was going through the script. And they were like, okay, I, I don't, I don't want to see him in the suit. He's like, what? He goes, yeah, we, we don't want to see him in the suit. Um, I I don't want to see him fly. Uh, And then at the end, he he has to fight uh, a giant spider. (laughs) And he's like, "Was this Superman or was this Batman?" No, this is Superman. Oh, I thought it was Batman. No, this is Superman. He was like, "I I know, uh, I know this story though." Yeah, let's go back. He goes one like the suit and the flying is is kind of of his thing. Superman, but he goes, "What? Why a giant spider?" And he goes, "Well, you know." I, I remember I saw King Kong when I was a kid and like the doors open up and I guess like his whole thing was he, he just wanted Superman to fight this giant entity where it is just kind of like the only way to sort of make Superman in a David versus Goliath situation, I I think was the whole principle, but it, it was just wild. And the guy that they had cast to play Superman was Nicolas Cage. Now, some of you are like, why are you going on and on about this? You're supposed to be talking about The Flash. Well, there is a part in this, and obviously there's a multiversal theory that is is used to, to bring in a lot of cameos. They do a clip, and, and there's sort of CGI, sort of not, where it's like at one point they're looking at another world. There's a bunch of is, cameos in it there. It is Nicholas cage as superman, as superman fighting. fighting a giant spider and i was like oh my god <laughs> it's um, awesome but and, and, the dire- and the directors talked about this this that's why i was like i don't feel bad spoiling that one but there's so much more and you know the ending of that story correct mm-hmm. that so that ended up not getting made no it did not <laughs> and bits of that script ended up in a completely different movie called 
Wild Wild West, which is if you wonder why they're fighting <laughs> a the giant, giant spider, mechanical spider at the end of that movie, that's you, why. you now know why. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, man. Um, but I'm also with Chris on this. I really like this movie. And that was me going into it being a huge Grant Gust fan in the TV series. And I was like... Is it, is it Grant, Gutt or, uh, Grant, Grant Gust? Grant Gust? Yes, Grant Gust. So it is not... Because every time I say this, I mess his name up. I say Gustin, like Justin with a G. Oh, so no. I apologize. Yeah. Okay. Um, but so I was going into it like, ah, this. There's, there's just no way this is going to this is going to do it for me. And it, it did it 100% did. And I give or take everything going on with Ezra. He really actually did do a good job portraying the flash and the characters that he had to do. Cause obviously there's two of him in there between the, yeah, that's, right. that's in a trailer that's a, that's too. A trailer. I mean, I, yeah. that's not a surprise, um, but all that, there were so many little Easter eggs that were everywhere. That I was just like, there, 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 it's, that. How was, Ke awesome. how was Keaton? He was awesome. He was fantastic. He, he was exactly that. I was going to see that movie, one, because I love anything Marvel or DC, and you guys know that. If you've ever listened to this podcast, you've heard me talk about the fact that I'm just a huge comic book fan. and um, it, we did I, have. It, it did just feel like a warm hug. You're like, oh, there's my guy again. There's just so much I want to say that I'm not going to say until you see it. And okay, I I'm sorry the the one I I saw it in the trailer and did not care. It was still an awesome moment when he just goes, yeah, I'm Batman. Yeah, I was like, oh, that's just all I wanted. My my inner comic book nerd. Do you feel screamed. like he re grabbed the the belt as as the goat Batman now? Because now it's dude. I'm I'm telling you, I'm not going to say anything else until you see this movie. Oh, gosh, it, you have to. You absolutely have All to right. see this movie. And I will say, we had one friend who was like, "Gosh, there's just too much CGI. I'm so over watching CGI." And I'm like, unfortunately, that's going to be all movies moving forward. There's going to be so much CGI in these types of movies yeah it's just you know, how, you, how you use it well and it, the other thing too is it's like i don't know if you're aware but there was kind of a lot going on the past several years in the world <laughs> a lot of the stuff that's now coming out was getting made some of it's just gonna have to be cgi'd in there yep. so uh it, it's uh i i don't know i i liked it i really really liked it too do you think this bodes well for DC moving forward? This is a good, good <laughs> well, one. Well, that's that's a much deeper dive that I don't even think we have time for on this podcast today. Well, I am curious because they did have an ending credits scene considering we don't know what's going to happen moving forward with The Flash. And the ending credit scene makes zero sense. There's only one thing I can take away from it, so I really need you guys to watch it. I, Josh, I want you to see it because I want you to tell me what you think about it because there's only one takeaway I can get from it. I, I actually have a takeaway on it but again i don't want to ruin that until okay. you see it but okay. it's there's a lot of discussion right now with the fact that someone that made one of your favorite franchises of all time guardians of the galaxy just <laughs> basically went over and now picked up the mantle for dc and the problem was is there were these three or four movies that were already in the can that they were like, look, this is, this is how we're resetting parts of the universe. And this is how we move forward. And now you've got two new people coming in as, as heads leading the charge and they're going to want to do things their way. There was actually discussion about some of the, the things that were shot. I don't even know if you know this, there were shots of certain characters with other characters that they cut because they don't want those characters in the movies moving forward. So they were already in the can. Yeah. And they they removed them. Yeah. So Yeah, cuz like from the Justice League, I guess. It's just a lot. It was <clears throat> huh, Yeah. Hmm. I'm about to Can't wait for DC to be Guardians of the Galaxy 4 through 12. <laughs> Sounds great. Uh what movie are we doing <clears throat> this week? And I can tell you, a lot of people, just week one, I mean, I, I didn't think that this was going to be one that really got talked about a lot, but a lot of people like the Transformers movie. I'm not going to watch Transformers. I haven't watched the first 400, so. 
Well, neither oh. did I, but this is also kind of set more. I still want to see the boogeyman. Oh, that's pre-sale. Dang it. What? What was Opp- that? Oppenheimer. Man. Oh, yeah. No, no I've, we're, I'm that's definitely July. seeing that. Definitely that's seeing July. that. There's no um, hard feelings. There's that. It's like a funny one. That with, one. <laughs> with Jennifer <laughs> Lawrence. While funny, <gasps> also. But also, I don't think we should. You're going to be gone in Alaska where there's no movie theaters. It, yeah. So can we do something on streaming? Yes. Yes, we can. <laughs> we can even go with a classic film if you want to do that. We could reach back into the file because we've got a bunch of those. Hold one as we. <laughs> I can just see Ryan staring a hole through his computer right now, typing. Yeah. Yes. You're scouring like, the what's new on Netflix list right now to, uh, to figure out what would be great. Anytime I see someone like typing and like looking, all I can think of is, is not a serious movie part, but two different. Uh, things one from uh, Liar Liar where he's typing or sorry Liar Liar Bruce Almighty I love Bruce Almighty where he's <laughs> oh that, what's a great meme that's a and great then, meme yeah it gets used everywhere but the other one is uh, from Super Troopers where he's like enhanced Ooh, Clint Eastwood's tip, The tip, Mule tip, tip, tip. was released enhanced. on Netflix do you see The Mule <gasps> I didn't. wait a minute Guess what's out? Oh, no. Yes, guess Crap. what's out? You Josh, guys, you guys weren't fast enough. Too bad. Guess what we're watching? Oh no! 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 Extraction two. I can't do another hour and a half. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You know what? You know what, Haley? You rarely get to like be this excited about movies. Yeah. It's usually you it's have it to only trudge. because of Chris Hemsworth. That's it. It's only because of Chris and, Hemsworth. That's all. That's the only reason. Her, she's her taste in movies are very different than mine, and that's okay. There's plenty of things for everyone. It's not Hubie Halloween, so okay. Yeah. Extraction yeah. two. Yeah, honestly, God, that was Ugh. terrible. All right, Extraction two, and uh, go to the hot take. Run. Hot take. I'm so excited, you guys. Yikes. They already announced an Extraction 3 is coming out. Like before, Why would you like, do this, Ryan? Why? Yes! I said run. We, we already get, She got the W. Now run away. You crossed the finish line, then you threw the baton back. Like, yeah, you did. Yeah, exactly. No, we, no, we Jokic did. Okay, we Jokic. Dropped the ball at the goal line before you crossed the end zone. Um... Can I can I go last on this because I no because this is your hot take and I, I honestly don't know what you're gonna pick because I think it's between two things. I'm so and curious. I, go first. You, I I wonder if I've guessed it. I actually said I'm very intrigued to see what you and Ryan pick. So if you two want to go first, I, I'll go I've there. got a couple I feel options. Like, I feel but, like mine's interesting. So we we have to clarify. We have to clarify really quickly. Yes, Star Wars. We're going to count the first three movies as its own trilogy because there was such amount of time. Or are you counting that no, no, as no, a no. full? That, no, that, that is. That's a trilogy. They're, they're, they're split into three so, different trilogies. Yeah. I, I also would then say Indiana Jones also can be its own trilogy because the fourth I mean, movie comes ignoring, way after. We're ignoring Crystal Skull. We, and then whatever the new one is about to be. Yeah. Aww. Crystal well, Skull uh, is what is a we, uh not Wheel of Time. That's something else. <laughs> that's, um, that's Link, isn't it? <laughs> God, no, Ocarina of Time. No, that's not what I was thinking of. There is a there is a book called Wheel of Time, I believe. Um, crap. We are calling those tri- trilogies. They're, they're, they're true. Okay, I'll, I'm, I'm here for that. Yeah. I'm here for that. The, I, I, the Star I agree. Wars, for sure. Like they even like Star Wars fans <clears> will tell you, there's three different sets of three movies. So wonderful. Um, Can you repeat the hot take? For those yes. that, that that did not recall from last week, it is what yeah, the second is the second movie in the trilogy, excluding Dark Knight, which we all would agree is probably the best of the th- of a three. It's just too easy. It's a layup. So we we want people to really go and vote on this one, especially since we didn't do a hot take last week, excluding the Dark Knight um, from basically that that trilogy of Batman movies. What is the best? second film in a trilogy of all time like which one is like the second film is just oh my god that was amazing better better than, better than the first and likely better the third feels like a letdown because of it or maybe not a letdown or maybe not a but, letdown, just, but just you're like wow this like, one was so much better so yeah. so great and boy there are some interesting lists on the internet about this yes, one the, i saw the, one of them i was like oh that is way wrong yep ryan would you like to go first 
I'm happy to go first. And this also is personally resonating with my childhood because I had these trilogies, but this trilogy specifically on VHS. And so I was able to watch them individually from VHS tape to VHS tape. Without a doubt, the best second film in a trilogy of all time is The Empire Strikes Back in Star Wars. It is the first time we're introduced to Yoda, by the way, in the film series, who becomes one of the most critical pieces of any trilogy film of all time. There's action from start to finish. It is way better than the first film. There are so many storylines abound in this film from start to finish. It is without question the best second film in a trilogy of all time. And it keeps you on your seat all two hours from start to finish. I love this film. I, I the the depth into the the Jedi training, the 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 way that Luke is unable to control his anger. Like I just love all of this film from start to finish. The the Han Solo love story, it's great. Start to finish, Empire Strikes Back, best of a second film in a trilogy of all time. An excellent pick, an excellent pick, and and a, a worthy. I, mean, I, I a worthy don't think contender. any. I don't think anyone can argue that that's not a great pick. It's on every list that I looked up for this, and I. It's I fantastic. Totally get it. Can I I'm go? really split, Haley. Do you want to go? Oh, speaking of split, mine's split. <laughs> mm. <laughs> From the Unbreakable series, uh, tri- isn't that the third one though? <laughs> No, split, split is the second. Glass uh, was after. Glass was the Glass third, was one. The third one. This was obviously a trilogy that people didn't expect. And his his character playing almost 19 different people and the story in this was absolutely unbelievable. Now, Gla- um, Glass was good, but this one was just, it just set the bar of the storyline throughout this whole. But I see, I, I, I can't pick that one and I, I i love that movie and i love that it set up a trilogy that we didn't know we were going to get because th- the way that they used that to then ramp into glass was cool because they brought back bruce willis from the first movie uh that that first movie is just unbreakable is so good it's so good it's so good mm, i don't know i like split better all right go i ahead. think i know what you're choosing go ahead do I follow my heart or do I follow trying to win the, the poll? Well, I mean, look, if we were trying to win the poll, you wouldn't have excluded Dark Knight. You would have just gone with that and been I like, think, ah, I think I, think I won from the, the poll. Room. So <laughs> might as well just go. I definitely, I definitely won the poll. There's a lot of, of Star Wars See, fans and I was about there, to so follow my heart, Ryan, but now I'm going to body check Uh-oh. you into the board. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So I wasn't going to do this one. I was actually going to do the other one, but because Ryan started doing his victory lap already, I'm going to choose okay. Back to the Future 2, yeah. which, is the, which is the better of the entire trilogy, but not the movie I was going to choose. Um, man, I don't know. I don't know. The first one to me is just... It, uh, you, it's it, tough to beat. It's great, but you get the hoverboard. You get all of the... Also... Also, you very get the interesting. Domestic violence. In it. Very interesting. Very you interesting because there's a, oh yeah. yeah, there's there is a uh, there is a reference to that in the Flash. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Not the one I was going to choose, Ryan, but your preemptive victory lap, just like the Miami Heat, needed to be stomped on. <laughs> okay. Wow, we're getting personal on this. Okay, you're you're the last pick in the poll. Then we're going to bury you, bury you, unless Make that was what you're going to choose. In which case, I'm happy to go back to my other one. Nope. And I thought you were going to step on mine. You are doing it? Ah! Oh, that's I'm not going even to fair. Go that's to the not even Spider-Man fair. Spider-Man trilogy. Spider-Man 2 with Tobey Maguire. Because, look, do I think those are, like, individually one of my favorite Spider-Man movies? No. I think it it would have to be Tom Holland, but also it would be the one where they bring back Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire just because of that. All of that was built and predicated upon that first trilogy of movie. The third one, I shout out to Topher Grace in that '70s show that he had no business being Venom. <laughs> that that was a complete. Also, the musical section oh, just makes God. no sense. Yeah, even that all was these unfortunate. Years later. It just had oh. dancing. The 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 just yeah, it's, bad it's dance rough. move. It's, it's, it's rough. 
Can, can, sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. No, the way Monsell roll back the footage because he no, saw me no, looking no. at the Tobey Maguire on my phone and I he did. gave me that look of, oh no, I really? Go with that one. And it is on camera. I was <laughs> a thousand percent. You played yourself. Um, he so. set me up. <laughs> and I was like, oh, is that a bad pick? Okay, I guess I'll pick split. Exactly. It was, it was between those two. Okay, wait, I'm not, I'm not done. Let me, I'm let me finish. Go away. Yeah, so. Um, Alfred Molina oh, as Doc Ock. Oh, so good. It's just so good, man. It's so I good. I love James Franco in this film. I think I thought James Franco was excellent in his role as Harry Osborn. Yeah, but I, I think that the the thing is like you sort of have him in the first film as well. That second film is just so awesome. And regardless of the who fact do, who that doesn't you, fall in love with Kirsten Dunst, by the way. You fall in love with Kirsten Dunst in this film, right? And she was you, a great it, yes. So if you do if you do go back and watch those movies, th- those are the beginning of CGI. Oh yeah. It it is Shout out Sam Raimi for <laughs> Yeah, dude. He I, he made lemonade out of lemons it, when you go back and you realize what his limitations were. Not that it was by any means bad, but just like the way that you can move things around in CGI now versus then you know, leaves something to be desired. But I, that that is my pick. That is the thing that I think is going to take it over the top because while a lot of people would agree with you about Star Wars, a lot of people that love Star Wars are going to love the fourth and sixth movies or the first and third, however you want to phrase it from, from that. You are going to have people, I think, that like Unbreakable better than Split. You are going to have... Back to the Future too. People ride uh, hard. Pe- they do. They do. And I totally get why you went there. But to me, if if you put like me on the spot, <coughs> as I'm, oh god, um, it, it would be the first one. So, just be happy I didn't go with my third choice. What was? I'm, I'm afraid to ask. What was? There's some, there's some Austin really- Powers, the spy oh, who gosh. shagged me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, though. I like, uh, I like that trilogy. Movies. People forget I like that. Those like, movies. <laughs> we have some important omissions from from this list because I I made a massive list on my own. Yeah, and it, like, for, there's some weird ones out there too, like uh, Kung Fu Panda Two. Like, I didn't. I Man. saw that on the list. I wasn't. I wasn't in that. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah, would have been a good one. Yeah, Lord of the Ring Two Towers. It's Return of the King, though. Oh, I I think Two Towers is way better than Return really? of the King. Uh, one that I thought Haley was going to do, but she did not. It was right there for you. Captain America Winter Soldier. Oh, I, you didn't even think about it, no, did you? No, so we had a conversation about this, and we were like, do we consider... Those are three Captain America movies. It's Captain America, First Avenger, Captain America Winter Soldier, and and uh, Civil War. But, but then do we consider go... Civil War... So, why can't I talk? Civil War. Would you consider that... Just a Captain America movie. It is Captain America Civil War. It that is by definition. Yeah, but then on top of that, if you're including that one, now you have just an absolutely incredible film that also has a bunch of your other favorite characters from the universe in it. So how how do you pick the second one? Over? I completely agree. I know. I get it. I get it. Uh, Godfather <laughs> two, which I thought someone was going to pick. Yeah, I get Blade, that. Blade two. Blade, Blade two. two is my runner up. And the one that I wanted to choose until Ryan started doing his victory lap, D2, the Mighty Ducks. Oh, the knuckle puck. The knuckle puck. Yeah. Oh, Against Lord. Team Iceland. That's where my heart wanted to go, Ryan, but you forced my hand. Yeah. I thought you were going to go with Stuart Little 2 from the Stuart Little trilogy. Mm. <laughs> Tempting, but... <laughs> As always, thank you guys for listening to The Cloud with Chris Young. From me, Ryan, Josh, and Haley, we love y'all. Make sure to go vote on this one. This is a big poll. And uh, as long as it's not Ryan. And we're out! (laughs) Don't vote for Ryan. Don't vote for Ryan. Anyone but Ryan. Anyone but Ryan. See, it just goes with the anyone, anyone but Ryan. Ryan. Yeah. What? Anyone but Ryan. Hey. Uh, hey. Hey. Anyone but Ryan. Hey. 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 Anyone but Ryan. Hey. Hey. Anyone but Ryan. Hey. 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 H